Hello everyone, it's Josh and I'm here today with a Bath and Body Works haul. Um, if you watch my channel in the past, you know that most of the time I was behind the camera, not in front of the camera, um, typically because I felt like it was more interesting to see the candles up close as I was talking about them. Um, and sometimes I was in front of the camera, certainly on my other channel I was in front of the camera a lot more, uh, but it seems to be that most people prefer the reviewer uh, to be in front of the camera uh, more times than not. So I'll be doing that a bit more um, in this kind of updated version of the channel. Um, though you saw my homeworks collection video a few days back, I was behind the camera just because I was literally filming it as I went through um, and was looking at the collection. But it'll be a balance between the two, but happy to hear your thoughts along the way. Um, but wanted to do a haul from the most recent buy to get to sale. So unfortunately, that's really the best sale we tend to get now from Bath & Butter because either buy one, get one, or buy two, get two on their candles. At their current, what, 25 50 maybe 26 50 now, pending um, per candle. Um, occasionally, there you know will be a 12 75 or, you know, I think that's as low as it goes now for the sales. And if you have a 20% off coupon, it's not terrible. Um, but unfortunately, I've kind of gotten, I'm off that list now. I was on it for a while. Um, funnily enough, I actually uh, realized that they had my email address incorrectly in their system. So when I tell them my phone number, um, it wasn't attached, I guess, to my mailing address. So I was getting coupons every month for most of the year. And once they corrected that in store and they put the right number with it, and then I guess they attached my customer profile of how often I shop with them, which is once a month or so, maybe twice a month, depending, you know, if I'm getting a in shower gel or something. Um, once they attach it to my actual buying habits, immediately uh, coupons stopped. And that's the thing is, I think, most people may or may not, actually, I don't know if people are aware of this, but um, a lot of people think, oh, well, they tell you in store, it's almost like points, it's almost like rewards. Now, if you're in the reward, the reward app, which is still in testing or only in limited markets, this may be true. But if you're not, and you're just giving them your phone number or giving them your email address for coupons, as they say, it actually hurts you to give them that information because they have some sort of algorithm, I don't know exactly what it is, but different customer profiles, which shows the more frequently you purchase, the less frequently they need to give you coupons. Obviously, if someone is in once or twice a year, they're gonna send them coupons regularly to try to woo them to come in. If they know you're coming in once a month already and you're purchasing 50, 80, $100 at, at a hit, there's not much need for them to give you coupons. They're gonna try like letting it go by and seeing if you still purchase. And if you do, great, they're not gonna get sent any more coupons because why, they don't need to. Um, Case in point, people always say, I don't know why I get them, right? There are different ones. And they, you know, they think that the more you go, again, in store, they might say, oh yeah, this is for coupons. Yeah, but it actually works against you to give them that information. So I may actually stop doing that, not attaching it to me because there's literally no benefit. It's actually a hurt, a harm to, for it to, to um, track my purchases in that way. Um, example is my sister-in-law, fairly infrequent shopper, certainly less frequently than I am or was, uh, and she would receive coupons, maybe the same mailer as me. Her three coupons would be very different than my three coupons or two coupons. So she might get free free three wick candle valued at twenty four fifty. I might get a 10 off 30 um, and a free body care item, or I might get a 20% and then something that says we're hiring for the, the holidays, where she might have gotten a three wick candle a you know 10 off 40 and a 20 percent or and a free full-size body care item so they really do have different sets of coupons for different customer profiles based on the frequency of how they often they shop and though you would think it's loyalty they're gonna give me better ones the more i shop the reverse is true the less you shop the better coupons they're gonna try to send you to will you so that's my little rant slash info for folks in that so I'm gonna stop giving them my, my email address and my phone number in the store so they can stop tracking my purchases in store and maybe I'll we'll actually start receiving coupons again because I haven't for a couple of months. Anyway, that said, it, I do reduce my purchasing habits when there aren't those coupons because it's not a good, as good of a deal, especially compared to some other brands out there and the really great discounts that they offer. However, I'm still the you know, the, the chump who purchased 12 candles over the past weekend. So what are you going to do? However, uh, is what it is. There were some I wanted to get. I didn't participate in candle day. I haven't done that for a couple of years now. Um, it's just not worth the hassle. Again, saving a dollar, maybe a dollar or two per candle. I'm not purchasing 40, 50 candles to make it worth the $15, $20 I might save. I'd rather go in leisurely a week later and just buy what I want and not deal with the hassle of it. Unless there was some candle day exclusive returning favorite that I must, you know, it was a must have for me, which 
there haven't been in recent years. Um, but there were some I wanted to get that I know probably wouldn't be around for a long time. So I went into the store um, and did uh, this purchase. And actually it's a collective haul in fact, because I did eight and then I did four the next day, um, actually buying some dupes of what I purchased in store um, on the first haul. Um, so this is m not as interesting as some maybe because it's 12 candles, but literally um, three of the, I'm sorry, four of the cents are multiples. <laughs> so it's actually um, like, I think five cents, but you know, 12 candles total, but we'll go through them. I'll give my quick overview or my thought on uh, the fragrance or why I purchased it or why I purchased multiples of them. Um, but some of these, I do plan on doing some in-depth sniff and reviews on them. And in fact, some comparisons because um, two of these scents that are new or returning favorites um, are either very directly a repackage or just a re-release of an old Slack and Era 2011 scent um, or a very close repackage of the twist with a different name. So we'll get into that, um, but I'm really uh, loving some of these scents. So dig right in. First of all, uh, I grabbed another peppermint sugar cookie. Um, this one came out, as everyone knows, last year, 2020 was the first time it came out. I did a burn of the day 60 second review on this one. You know, I'm not m one for the baker sweets that much, that frequently, but this one is just so authentic. It's so, it's almost like a Thin Mint without the chocolate. Um, it's not overly buttery. I mean, you have you know this, you smell this. It's sold out online and I was like, man, I'm burning through one right now, but I definitely want one more as a backup in case it wouldn't come out next year. As popular as it is, I'm sure it will, but stranger things have happened with BBW. So this is just a single one of those. Kind of wish I had bought more. If I had a 20% off coupon, I probably would have, but I didn't, so I didn't. Um, then we, I grabbed these two, which I feel like fly under the radar now, so I don't need to show you them both, but uh, anyway, so I got two of these, the Cranberry Perbellini. These were, I think, sort of a Candle Day release collection. Um, from the past four or five years, um, there had been a collection that would come out pretty much on Candle Day that was, for the first couple of years, consistently mint chocolate, hot buttered rum, um, chestnut and clove, Cranberry Perbellini, um, maybe Red Velvet Cupcake, Merry Mistletoe. They did that for maybe two or three years and then dropped a few out, added a few. Creme Perbellini has still been coming out, I think every year, maybe not in 2020, but pretty much every year. But in kind of that like limited collection where it's not the collection that they're gonna have in stores for six weeks or eight weeks or 10 weeks. It's kind of like they get one shipment, maybe a decent amount of them, but when they're gone, they're gone. Sort of candle versus, you know, a lot of the, the big scents they have, you know, Fresh Balsam, from launch day number one until some of the annual sale and they cleared out, they're gonna have fresh balsam there for you in four different designs. Something like this, it's kind of like, get it when you want it, when you see it, if you love it. <laughs> like I'm singing like Ariana Grande. Um, but, because uh, when it's gone, it's probably gonna be gone. And unfortunately, though this is like one of their best, if not the best, fruity Christmas slash holiday winter scents, um, it doesn't get the love that some of the newer ones do, which I think is just based on I don't know, bad taste or bad marketing, I don't know. <laughs> but Crammy Perbellini is an ultimate favorite of mine um, in general. Um, it first came out in, I want to say 2010. Um, it was late in the year and it actually, I, oof, if I can remember, I think it was like three cents came out together. Yes, in fact, it was, it wasn't when they did huge test collections. It was actually before that era. It was Slack & Co. And they released Hot Buttered Rum for the first iteration. They released Vanilla Spice, the first iteration, first and only iteration. Part of the Holy, Holy Trinity for us old time, you know, uh, Slack & Co. era fans. Um, and Cranberry Perbellini. It was right, it was late in the holidays, like December, right around New Year. So for me, this is very much a, like a New Year's scent before they did their Peach Bellinis and Sparkling Icicles and their kind of New Year's collections that they do now with you know your black tie and your uh, champagne toast and party dress and all that. Um, but it's the notes on it, of course, if you don't know, fizzy pear nectar, sparkling red cranberries, lush apricot, tart black currant. The notes have pretty much stayed the same over the years as far as what they list. Um, I actually do like this packaging, the, the, the plaid with like the little sparkles on it. Um, it's not the best, but it's far from the worst they've done. And oh boy, this is just, it's rare to have a fruit, fruity, sweetie drink scent that doesn't scream summer, which this one really doesn't because of that cranberry in there and pear being, you know, the fall and cranberry being the winter. It's sweet without being cloying. It's got a depth to it. It is tart. Um, you do get a little bit of that effervescence, that bubble that is hard to really nail. Some of it is probably in our heads, um, but there is a bit of that there where for me, it's just like similar to frosted cranberry only in the sense of, all right, once Christmas is over and you want something a little bit fresher and a little bit brighter, you're not ready for to go to the tropics, like they want to send you on 
December 26th, BBW is like, here's your lay, welcome to Hawaii. I'm not about that. I still want the winter and holiday fragrances when it's just becoming cold out and hopefully snowing by that point. Um, but this is one where it is something that is different from some of the more heavy bakery spiced items that you've had throughout September through December. Love this one. If you haven't purchased it, do it. It's it's really a best of the best. So I grabbed two of those because it's one of those things where I wouldn't be surprised any year if they stopped um, releasing it just because I, I don't know how well it sells. So those were a couple cents there. Then we've got this one. I was kind of surprised to find, I wasn't particularly searching for it, but when I saw it and I smelled it, I was like, you know what, this is good. Let me grab it. Um, and that is from the, the Giving collection. This was the Give Hope, um, the Give Hope uh, peppermint marshmallow candle. What's interesting is the there wasn't a whole lot of consistency in the ones I saw in stores um, to the lids or the jars. For instance, there's another one that I did purchase that was actually in a clear jar with colored wax with a white barn lid, whereas this one is colored wax, colored jar, uh, opaque with a bath, you know, the simple Bath and Body Works lid. Um, I feel like maybe some people saw these with like the sparkly gold lids, which would would have been prettier, but we know that lids are you know a mess depending when you go and where, where you're getting them from. Um, this one is very close and why, why I do like it. It is very close to the original marshmallow peppermint um, that was released in, I wanna say 2010, certainly 2011, maybe even 2010 um, under Slack and Co at Bath and Body Works. Um, I will do a sniff comparison review video of this compared to the original. I do still have one of the OG um, uh, marshmallow peppermints unburned just because some of those 2011 ones I've kept just because they're like the holy grail of, of amazing Slack and Co era scents for me. Um, and it's very similar to this. Again, this is nice. It's, it is the marshmallow, like a vanilla pumpkin marshmallow without being too sticky sweet or artificial with a soft peppermint in there. So it's not quite as soft as like the peppermint in the peppermint sugar cookie, not quite as strong as the peppermint in twisted peppermint. Notes on this one, crushed peppermint. Maybe it is like the crushed candy canes. Is that what it's called? I haven't ever purchased it, but similar to that, like the crushed candy canes where it's more like a vanilla peppermint. Um, fluffy marshmallows and powdered sugar. Again, there's, I would say there's almost a little, it's a little bit of a butteriness in there. Like not, not quite like the mint chocolate, it was like that buttercream mint, although not far off from it. Uh, I'm curious actually what uh, Kent uh, of the Candle Channel would say. I have to go back and, and double check what he said on this because it wouldn't surprise me if um, there were comparisons to like the buttercream mint that was released in 2013 or so. Um, either way, really nice, soft, a peppermint, enough of the marshmallow uh, or how BBW's interpretation of marshmallow. Um, and it is really nice. So I did grab two of those because I know that again, they tend to sell fast because it is a pretty popular scent. Uh, which actually surprises me why it was released in this kind of one and done collection versus a collection that would have lasted for the full season. Uh, but that is that. Um, and then let's see, I've got two more candles to go. Um, I grabbed this one and this is what I was talking about where it's the white barn lid and it's green wax, but it's a clear glass vessel. Um, and this one is Give Thanks Fresh Winter Air. Um, anytime they release anything that's conceptual like that, you know, the frozen flowers, the eucalyptus snow, the winterberry wreath, all this, I'm always excited when I first hear the names and notes because I'm like, oh, maybe they're going to be really good. <laughs> or maybe it's a repackage of a Slack & Co era scent or something from, you know, 2010 to 2013 and could be amazing. Um, unfortunately, everything I listed there, they, I disliked, actively disliked all of those ones that I smelled this year. The, the flurries, the snowfall, the the winterberry wreath, none of them uh, were, were, were my bag, even though based on notes, they very well could have been. Um, and, but I saw Fresh Winter Air and the notes on this Zesty Citrus Fresh Peppermint Cold Evergreen. Like, could that be like a Mary Mistletoe? Could that be something um, of, of, you know, ye old uh, classics uh, with Bath & Body Works? Um, and so I, I, you know, checked it out. I wanted to check it out. And whew, it is really, really good. I feel, I haven't seen folks talk much about this. If you have, let me know. Um, I actually, and I got, I think, three that day or two that day or something like that and grabbed a, a total of actually four of them now because again this collection one and done this is kind of a throwaway like they're not putting their most popular scents necessarily in this collection um and it wouldn't surprise me if maybe none of these scents even return um in in subsequent years and this is one where it's actually very very close to a repackage of an old classic um, that is one of my favorites. I'll actually leave you hanging as to what that is because I'm gonna do a, an in-depth comparison video um, soon comparing it to this. But if you haven't smelled this and your store still has these, 
go smell it, see if you like it, because the, it is so rich and deep. It's not, Fresh Winter Air is the wrong name for it, first of all. It does lean heavily toward the pine, but there's a sweetness to it um, and really like a sappiness that is not listed in the notes, but is so good. And I burned it today, I had a wonderful burn, wonderful throw, um, really like a sleeper hit candle. Um, so check this out if you haven't already. Highly recommend it um, based on my first couple of hours burn. So grab four of those. So up to what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, the last three. So I grabbed three of these. Um, and this one is uh, not a repackage, it's just a straight re-release of a Slack & Co. I mean, I'm like a broken record, but it's true. Um, a Slack & Co era summer fragrance um, that I feel like first came out probably in 2010, maybe 2009. I started purchasing in winter 2009, so I'm not sure what all was all necessarily out before then, but definitely in 2010, it was big. Um, and then it was body care in like 2011. It was out for a year or two and it was never heard from again, never was repackaged. Things close to it, tweaked versions, but nothing like the original. And then in summer of 2020, they released this candle again under White Barn, didn't bring it back in 2021. And now for like the new transitional White Barn, they released it in like the Palo Santo collection. And that is pretty ombre glass. Um, of pomegranate lemonade. This is one of my top summer fragrances, period. Um, Pink Sangria was another one that was really strong, really strong, really wonderful. There have been so many versions of lemonades. Watermelon Lemonade, I bought one candle the very first time it came out, burned half of it. I think it's weak. One of the notes in that one was ice water. Ice water. Not even sparkling water, ice water. Yeah, because it's it's not watered down. I was not interested in it. it like I don't like it. I, I think it's so. I don't want to even say stores that that it reminds me of because I'm not trying to be judgmental of crappy stores, but I don't like it. You could get it anywhere for cheap. Um, pomegranate lemonade is well. First of all, the notes on it: juicy pomegranate, zested lemons, sugar crystals. Sure, whatever. Um, I will say so. It came out in a similar colored vessel. Um, in 2020, I think about maybe two or three of those burn through it because I could burn that all summer long. It's so, so strong and sweet. Again, without being cloying, it's tart, it's juicy. Um, I think, again, to, to reference Kent of the Candle Channel, this is a juicy label. This is a juicy um, ombre packaging. I think the packaging is really, um, I don't wanna say high end because it's still like a shrink wrapped you know, label. It's not like it's the colored glass, but it looks really nice, I think, especially with like the frosted gold white barn lid. Um, oh, let me smell it. Oh my gosh. It, it, it is so, sh it, it is authentic. It is sugared fruit. Pomegranate, it's not as tart even as pomegranate. It's more like berries, but it's, it's a, it is tangy. The lemonade, very accurate. It is a sugared but tart lemonade. It's perfectly balanced of, it's got a little bit of like a, um, almost like a sweet tart, like that citric acid tang that a sweet tart or like a Sour Patch Kid has. There's a tiny bit of that in there with that lemonade, like a little bit of a powdery note to it. Not, you know, like floral powdery, but like candy powdery. <sighs> kind of like your good limoncellos. And the pomegranate, it's deep, dark berry, maybe some blackberry, not quite current because it is pure summer. Um, not sure that it calls a drink, maybe. Um, it's almost like those acai bowls where it's like a thick puree and you put like fruit and, you know, like dried coconut and cacao nibs on it and stuff. That's like the base of this, it's that deep, thick, like pureed, like half frozen fruit, almost like a like a, like a frosé or like a, a sorbet that's like a frozen rosé, fruity kind of thing. If you've ever had Jenny's frosé, um, sorbet, uh, it's kind of like that where it's that balance of sweet and tart and bright. And in fact, yeah, talking about, if you haven't had that, because not a lot of people have, but if you've had sherbet or sherbet growing up where it's, t it's a little creamy, but there is that tartness to it, regardless of the sweetness, there's a tartness to it. That's what this has. It is mouth-watering. I think it's incredible. I know some other reviewers are like, eh, it's fine, it's whatever. For me, it's like, it's a, it's like a, a Hall of Fame summer scent for sure for me. Um, so again, 
it was coming out now. I'm like, okay, maybe it's going to be out for all of 2022. Maybe it's just this weird transitional for the new year. Let me grab a couple. So I grabbed uh, three of them total because again, it's such a great scent. I'll never burn it now. Boy, it really matches that really matches my hoodie. Um, but come springtime, summer, it will be, it'll be on. I'll be burning through them. So really, really happy that that's back. And it kind of makes you feel like, well, then gosh, get some island nectar, get some, at this point, coconut leaves, get some of the oldies, but amazings, <laughs> not even goodies, amazings, um, and bring those back from the vault. Or if they won't do it, I'm hoping Harry, as he's relaunching his Slack & Co brand, which hopefully we'll have news Soon, he said on his live with Mr. Kong's mom, Melanie, um, that they'd be announcing shortly where Slack & Co. will be coming out um, alongside Homeworks and Scentworks and Aroma Home. Um, and so uh, he did post on Instagram, probably a few months ago at this point, actually, um, that he wanted folks to tell him of the Slack & Co. era since what are the favorites? And of course, I, you know, pull out my long list um, from my head and, and type them all out. But actually, I'm thinking I'm going to do some videos of my Slack & Co. wish list. Um, and I've got so much to say that it'll probably be four videos, if not five, um, because spring, summer, winter, um, autumn, and then, you know, year rounds or, or you know, um, aromatherapy or spa or whatever um, that don't fit in seasons. Because I really... A, love talking about it. B, I've got so many of them. I, I feel like hopefully you guys are into that. Like I'm gonna wanna see some of them as I talk through them. Um, and cause I wanna put it out into the universe of like, hey, go into your vault. You own, you've got your name back. You've got your blends, or you can even reinterpret and reimagine and improve upon with the higher quality that, that Homeworks and hopefully Slack and Co. I imagine, you know, the level above Homeworks potentially even uh, will bring us that Bath & Body Works we know doesn't, again. No shade against Bath & Body Works, I buy a ton of them. They're a good brand, they're a good candle, um, but we know that, you know, there is better quality out there, and, and right now, it's left for me that is Slack & Co. Um, or at least Homeworks and Scentworks, uh, and hopefully Slack & Co. launching soon. Um, so I think I'll do, again, tangent, I'll probably do uh, some of those videos coming up. Uh, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Um, and of course, I'll keep doing these in-depth sniff comparison reviews and haul videos. Haul videos I wasn't much in in the past. It was more like, hey, I have, I have all these test candles. Let me talk through them. And it was a haul slash review. Uh, but I'm going to try to do more hauls, give you the heads up of what I think of them, share what I've gotten, and then do some of the more like, you know, 15 minutes on a single candle or comparing to whatever. So I will be doing potentially um, a comparison video of this to the original Peppermint Marshmallow or Marshmallow Peppermint. And I will certainly be doing a video comparing this to the oldie um, that I believe this is like a repackage with a twist of, which stay tuned to see which one that is. And then I also have coming up, really excited about this, a kind of big haul actually from Ulta um, of um, the Scentworks three wicks with the wood, um, the 14 ounces, um, the opaque glass with the wood lid. Um, there was a really good deal on those. So I grabbed a bunch of those today for the first time I'd never had them before. So I'll be doing a haul and review on those. And I think that about covers it for today. 23 minutes for a haul, talking about a lot of candles. Not bad. I tend to go on and on, but I will take a 23 minute video as an improvement from my 45 to 50 minute days. So that is it for today. Stay tuned. Lots more coming up and let me know what you've purchased recently, if any of these and what you think. And until next time, take care.